best wood for outdoor projects is not what you think. But what is the best wood? And how much does it cost? Is it strong and durable? How long will it last out in the elements? Is it weather and water resistant? I'm gonna tell you. I had one of my favorite customers call me and ask me if I had any cedar in stock. And usually I ask them, what are you building? I usually ask them that question, that way I can gauge what type of lumber they need. They're calling me because in our area, at the big box stores, a cedar beam, six by six is almost $200. That's $8.30 per board foot. I told him that we don't carry cedar in stock normally because we're not a lumber yard, we're a sawmill. Being that they're one of my favorite customers, I wanted to find a way that I could help them. So I think I found a good product that'll fit their budget and their needs. I'm gonna show you a couple different solutions, their pros and cons, and even some solutions based on their region. When I was doing research for this video, I think I may have found a solution that I haven't seen very many people talking about. First, we're gonna start off by telling you the usual suspects that everybody usually talks about when it comes to outdoor wood. Mahogany, teak, cypress, iroko, even redwood. All of those would be good picks, but they don't grow in our area. Oh, I can't forget ironwood, but that is tough wood, brother. Redwood seems to do really well in those humid climates, and iroko seems to do really good in those coastal climates. It handles that salty water very well. We could list off finishes too, but that'll probably be for another video. If we do a video on finishes, we'll link it right here. I'm not gonna go too much further into those regional woods, because frankly, they don't grow here, and I don't know much about them. So my customer buddy asked me about pressure-treated lumber, and I said, no, don't do that. They'll last a long time, and it's relatively cheap. It's about $1.34 per board foot in our area. But the cons greatly outweigh the pros, being as though the pressure treated lumber has chemicals in it and it's not recommended for contact with skin, let alone getting food and kids and children around there. You don't want none of that. And you can imagine inhaling the dust from pressure treated lumber. It's the same thing as green treat or brown treat. You don't want none of it on your skin or even in your body. As for future reference, I'm using all these prices based on a six by six by eight foot beam. A pressure treated six by six is I'm checking my notes here, $32.16. It's cheap, but dangerous. Recycled plastic lumber is environmentally friendly, but that's about all it's got going for it. It's kind of expensive at $3.11 per board foot. That would come to $74.64 in our area for a six by six. Plus, recycled lumber looks kind of funny. Some examples online look like burnt tires molded together to look like a six by six. Not really pleasurable to the eye. Some of the tips that I wanna stress right away is to not use wide boards. Use narrower boards, a, a slat design. That way you can prevent boards from warping, cupping, twisting. Wider boards like to twist and cup. And another super important tip is to seal the end grain. Whether it be with a finish or whatever it is you use, even paint. Make sure the end grain is sealed, that way it keeps the moisture out. Type on 3 is recommended for outdoor projects because it's waterproof and has a longer open time. So you got a little bit more time to mess with it before it sets. It could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. So I know I said I wasn't going to talk about finishes, but I think it's important to note that if you use a UV resistant finish, you can avoid graying like this. Now a lot of these regional woods aren't available all across the country, but I have a wood in mind that you probably already know about, you were thinking of using before clicking on this video, and is available all across the country. It's cedar. So in the conversation with my customer, one of the first things he asked me about was cedar. Just like this. So your three main common types of cedar are the western red cedar, which is what you see for outdoor projects a lot. Then you got white cedar, and then you got the eastern red cedar, which is the aromatic cedar. They used to use those a lot for the cedar chests that you see back in the day. That type of cedar smells really great and repels rats, mice, bugs, and other varmint you don't want hanging around your house. And all those cedars that I mentioned aren't real true cedars. Those cedars are actually more like a juniper. A true cedar comes from the Himalayas or the Mediterranean areas. Think of the mighty cedars of Lebanon mentioned in the Bible. So most domestic cedars have what's called thujaplicin. Those are preservative oils found naturally in the cedars. That's what gives it its anti-rot properties. It's lightweight, it handles moisture well, and western red cedar is one of the cedars that were recommended in all of the climates. Cedar has a higher concentration of longitudinal trachneids, which are long hollow cells. Compared to hardwoods, these long hollow structures are more prone to splitting along the grain, especially when drying unevenly or under stress, and that is straight from Wiki. Now you gotta be careful when cutting this stuff because the sawdust has been known to mess with people's lungs. I know I've learned that lesson the hard way without using a mask. 
always use a mask when cutting cedar. And it's wise to mention that because of those longitudinal tracheids, it's wise to pre-drill everything, that way your ends don't split. And you could use oxalic acid for stubborn mildew or graying on cedar furniture. It's a natural cleaner that brightens the wood without harsh chemicals. But what if cedar isn't available in your area? What if it's just not cost effective? Well, I found something that's cheaper and just as good. Now my customer contacted me mainly because the cedar option was too expensive for him and wanted me to find something better, a little bit cheaper and just as good. So I had an idea. We could use something like this. Now my boss tells me that this post has been in the ground holding this gate up for about seven years now. And with all due respect, I think that this is a great alternative to cedar. Now I'm gonna start with the cons with this species because my customer was reluctant to use it. It's tough and it's really hard on the tools. Now I told my customer the pros about this product. It's strong, it's durable, it's long lasting, it's cheaper than cedar, and it's got a secret weapon, tyloses. Tyloses are balloon-like growths that develop in the pores or xylem of the heartwood. As these balloon-like structures fill the pores, they essentially plug them, restricting water flow through the heartwood. No water, no rot. And they also make the wood stronger. And before I even forget to mention it, that lumber I'm talking about is white oak. Now this is red oak. Do not use red oak. Red oak's got really wider open grain. It can suck in moisture a lot easier than white oak or really a lot of other species as well. You'll be wasting your time having to rebuild your project in a few years if you use red oak. Now here I am talking about finishes again. Consider a marine grade finish. It says here, a coat of marine varnish over a penetrating oil finish provides extra protection against water damage. And you can use that for all lumber species. And as an extra bonus here, consider using stainless steel fasteners. You can use galvanized coated screws or premium deck screws. All of those will help prevent rust. Now oh, it looks like the boys are over there cutting wood. Let's go check out what they're doing. Maybe it's cedar, probably not. But what if none of these options are available in your area? And you wanna get this done fast so you can have it ready for the spring planting or summer enjoyment. You don't have to wait for your local sawmill to cut it for you. You can certainly come to our yard and pick through our white oak trailer decking section of leftover pieces, but it's all gonna be inch and a half and two inch true to size, so it might not be the size you need, plus some of it's already grayed. And if you're not into that grayed look, you might need to figure something else out. What if you could just use any wood that you have on hand without worrying about it rotting on you? What if you can make pine last for decades? without chemicals. So in order to solve this problem, I told my customer about yakisugi, also known as shaosugiban. Now, I'm not a traditionalist in any sense, so if anybody watching this, please have mercy on me. I'm not gonna do this the traditional way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some pine and burn it and show you exactly the process of yakisugi. Traditionally, they would use cedar or cypress for this, but we're gonna use pine today. That way we could show you that, you know, essentially any wood can be used for outdoor projects if you burn it. All right, let's go over and grab a piece of pine. You wanna follow me? All right, we got just some regular old <clears throat> white pine here. We're gonna grab a piece or two. And we're gonna take it back over there and uh, demonstrate some burning techniques. I've never done this before, but we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> Find a really nice piece here. One that's not so bent. Well, maybe one that is bent. That one, one that I won't be able to sell. This one looks good. Traditionally, Jap the Japanese would take it and then they would line it up like this and then have it as a triangle. And they put brush all along in the inside here and they'd tie it together and then, they'd, and then they'd set it on top of a fire, a little tiny fire, and it would burn up both ends, burn it from one side and then burn it from the other side and it would completely char the inside like that. Now I firmly believe that that traditional method is probably the most efficient method, but you can also use a propane tank and just bur burn one side or both sides of the piece of lumber you're using it, especially if it's gonna go into contact with the ground. So we're just gonna burn up this bad boy, it's gonna look cool. It's a great day to do it on probably the hottest day in Minnesota summer. Yakisugi is the traditional Japanese method of preserving wood by burning it slightly on the outside of the timber. And by slightly charring the surface without burning the entire piece, the wood becomes basically waterproof through carbonization. Now, conflicting reports say that it makes it more durable and fire resistant, while some say otherwise. 
but most agree that this method makes any wood resistant to insects, fungi, mold, and subsequently the rot that we're trying to avoid here, all while being environmentally friendly. No chemicals, folks. I'm pretty sure I burnt off all my leg hairs. When you start getting this cracking and charred, that's how you know that piece is pretty well done. Now this is just a straight up char. And if you wanted, once this cools down, you could take it and then take a Brillo pad, scrape off all the ashes, fine particles, and uh, exp almost expose the wood again, which will give it a really cool design. I feel like this goes without saying, but I better mention this before I forget. When you're burning the wood like this, you need to have some sort of water source, whether it be a hose or a fire extinguisher or even a bucket of water. Make sure you stop the burning of the wood and maybe even extinguish any fires that may have started on the ground. And always wear PPE, like safety glasses. You wouldn't want one of these sparks or something to pop and go up into your face and hit your eye. You only get one set of eyes. When you're burning the wood, you want to make sure that you burn it thoroughly enough to where it starts cracking like this. If you don't burn it good enough, I feel like you don't get enough of the anti-rot protection if you just lightly blaze it. You need to get a good thorough burn to where it starts cracking like this for it to be most effective. Now maybe the yakisugi method is a little too much. Maybe you don't like this dark look. Maybe you want to go with something a little more natural like my customer wants. That's why I think white oak is the best for this situation. Oh, and by the way, that customer that we've been mentioning this entire video, that customer is Todd and Brandon and Eric, Sean, MJ, Shannon. That customer is me. It's Little John, it's Kurt. It's Lori, it's Kevin. That customer is the most important. The newcomer, the seasoned pro, the mom and pops that need somewhere to begin. That customer is you. You are now armed with this new knowledge of a suitable lumber species and methods that will assist you. I challenge you to go out and create. Create like God intended you to create. Show off your new creations. Make your friends and your family proud of you. And maybe even a little jealous of you. The best wood for outdoor projects is throwing it in front of cars that come by on the highway. It seems to handle salt water. It just handles it, okay? It just handles it. There's a donkey over there that was just screaming at me. As soon as I stop recording, he's gonna bark at me again. Sure enough, as soon as I walk away and press that button. All right, watch, if I walk away, maybe he'll say something. Eh, nothing? Fine, forget you. Oh, and by the way, that mystery customer, that's Todd. And the guy standing behind me messing with my head. <laughs> Get out of here, you son of a gun. Yeah, wave at the camera, wave at the camera. Hats in, Kyle. Look at that, new hats, new shirts. We are on point. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to buy one of these hats or one of these shirts. Now that you have a species in mind, and maybe a technique, it's all useless without knowing what type of lumber you're going to use. Are you going to use fresh cut green lumber or kiln dried? Now this video right here explores the critical differences between the two and could not be more important when selecting the type of lumber to use for your next outdoor project. And we'll see you there, brother.